Welcome back to Worldview. Now, we've been talking a lot this week about the impact of climate change, and we're going to spend some time now on something that not many of us has heard much about, but this is unconventional gas mining, which is going to be happening in former coal mines all around the world. This coal seam gasification is a very dangerous procedure. Even the CEO you're about to hear from in Australia trying to impress investors had some doubts about it. Bigger's now been closed down. Uh, they, there was an incident, it was a, a monitoring well read, I won't go into all the details, except to say I think it's highly likely that they did not pollute. We went to England just as the English moved a moratorium out for UCG and we picked up the very pick of the, of the coal licences. They are a little slow, they're very, very careful, the English. Uh, I must say there was a rather sense of joy particularly since I was born in England, of the colonials going back and socking it to them. And suddenly realised is that if you depressure that gas by lowering the water table, then the gas will come up. Hopefully it will come up through the production holes. And if you've seen things like gas lands and four corners, some of the gas comes up, not in the, in the holes. You really want to go down deep, well away from any part of interest to any other person. Stay away from a valuable aquifer. Keep the pressure in the reaction chamber negative, And then all of the gases stay in and they go up the production hole. Just two of our licences in Scotland are sufficient to power all of Scotland at its present level of demand for 150 years. Now, we're going to take a look at this entire process as we look at how the British government is now in the process of selling out the coal gas leases underneath the people of Scotland. Now, if there wasn't already tension between these two countries with a pending independence vote, this certainly isn't going to help. Well, folks, hang on to your hat. We're joined now on the program by citizen journalist Mel Kelly in Scotland. Now, she writes for the website Open Democracy in their Our Kingdom section. Now, Mel's a business analyst programmer by day and spends the rest of her time researching into the real stories behind the headlines. And some of her findings have been quite scary around something called UCG technology. Now, her first two papers on this subject caused members of the Scottish Parliament to ask serious questions of the Energy Minister, Fergus Ewing, over this process, which, by the way, only causes explosions, which, by the way, are only near the Sellafield nuclear plant. And the minister announced a consultation and to stiffer regulations there, but not in England or Wales as yet, thus the importance of our speaking today. Mel Kelly, welcome to Worldview. Good evening. Mel, let's start with a, a layman's definition of this unconventional coal and gas technology. What is UCG technology and what does it do? Basically, UCG is, they will use the same process as fracking without the chemicals or the water to drill down into the coal beds. And then once they get to the coal bed, they will then set the coal on fire underground, create massive cavities to extract the, gra the gas out of a second well. And then what happens is once they burn the gas, the cavity is left with toxic waste. The cavities collapse and then they hope that they can store the massive amounts of CO2 in those cavities. So basically we're going to ex have huge explosions underground, but we won't have any of the chemicals or any of the water to come back up. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, basically what they claim is they don't use water in the process when they do. They claim it's the technology safe when in fact what happened was the only EU trial resulted in an explosion. But the British government website tells us that that trial proved the technology was feasible. And what happens is reports in 2010, 11 and 12 from the trials in Australia, India and in America, all of those across those continents caused uh, cancer causing chemicals in the groundwater and in Australia you've got farmers can no longer use the boar, they can't water their animals because UCG contaminates groundwater, worse than fracking. So, so we have a technology that supposedly drills into existing and long bankrupted and abandoned mines. Um, you know, the, I'm going to play devil's advocate here uh, and ask why, you know, why, have, why is this a problem? I mean, these areas have already been mined before. Isn't that what the government would say? 
Well, what they're actually doing is taking coal that previously was un uneconomic to mine. So it's, it's not been mined at all yet in most places. And you're talking about under estuaries, under rivers, uh, about homes, near 10 miles from Sellafield to power plant, offshore. You're talking about the fifth or fourth in Scotland, one billion tonnes of coal have to be burned underground. So what size of cavity does that leave? How much groundwater gets contaminated by that process? The, the process is so untested and unproven that the Australian Queensland government banned it just weeks ago because they can't figure out how to stop the coal from burning yet. Wow. So <laughs> I'm a bit flabbergasted here. The argument is we can release the methane easier through these explosions, but uh, there are so many risks to so many other parts, uh, even more so than fracking. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, you are. You are talking about in Warwickshire, uh, there's an organisation, No UCG Works. They have found out that this untried, unproven technology is to be used in their area near Leamington Spa, which is famous for its clean, pure water. And they're now going to put it at risk by contaminating it with benzene, tuline. There is absolutely no zero limit. There's no safe limit for benzene. Once that gets in your water, you're dead. We're talking with Mel Kelly, citizen journalist uh, based in Scotland, uh, here on Worldview with Dennis Campbell about UCG gas technology. Now, Mel, my understanding is that there are several Tory benefactors that have obtained licenses for next to nothing, and the licenses will have a unique set of built-in bankruptcy, bankruptcy protections for investors against future environmental claims. Explain a little bit about how that's going to work. Well, basically, before UCG gets rolled out in Scotland, uh, our KMPG, those wonderful accountants, are going to court on behalf of David Cameron in Scotland to say that one company can set up a mine, then they can use accounting tricks to go bust, another set of directors take over, and neither sets of directors are liable for the cleanup costs or anything else, because guess what? KMPG has told them they could go bankrupt. So then what happens is we have a process that none of us knew about. The government didn't consult us that they wanted to give out licenses for 300 years of coal supply that belong to the British nation. And a former Tory party fundraiser who's been in Africa doing coal mining for years just happens to walk back into the country when the coalition comes to power, sets up a company, and now he's been handed licenses in Scotland, Wales, and England for billions of tonnes of coal. And basically, the, he claims that he, his company are experts. Not one of these companies getting a license have ever worked to UCT technology. There's only one plant somewhere in the world. It's banned in Australia, but you look on their websites, they'll claim they're experts. And then, so if you've raised funds for the Tory party, then you'll get handed 300 years worth of coal supply that belong to the nation to burn under our feet, pollute our water without liability. And then you're talking about air pollution. David Cameron has just finished a consultation where he is planning, planning to stop monitoring air quality in England and Wales. He plans to close down 600 air quality monitoring stations just in time for UCG to pollute urea. You, you say that the UK government won their initial court case, an appeal against, uh, and, and now another appeal that is currently being heard in the Scottish courts uh, trying to stop all this. Where, where does all that stand with the case and, and how is it going so far? Basically the case, uh, the appeal started this week in the Scottish court because the Scottish Parliament is uh, in total disagreement uh, because the Scottish Parliament quite rightly thinks that environmental law should not be overridden by bankruptcy law. So uh, the appeal has been heard and as far as I know uh, the judges are a way to make their decision but there's no decision as yet but basically as far as I know uh, 
it's already established practice in England that directors can play their funny tricks just to avoid clean up costs. But at least the Scottish Government is fighting on behalf of the Scottish people to stop David Cameron and KMPG using fancy accounting tricks to make sure they don't clean up and aren't, aren't being the liabilities for scarring the country. Well, it's situations like this that aren't going to keep Scotland in the Union for long, is it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just stunning stuff. Thank you so much, Mel, for sharing it with us tonight. Thank you, Davis. And if you want to read some more, Mel Kelly, she writes the, for the website opendemocracy.net. Um, yeah, the, there's a wonderful uh, set of articles and, and, and papers that she's very, very heavily researched and, and, and put a lot of effort into. Just go to opendemocracy.net and type in the name Mel Kelly. That's K-E-L-L-Y, and Mel, of course, is M-E-L. Uh, we'll keep you informed as this story continues to move forward, but uh, I won't say it's surprising, but it certainly is stunning. You're watching Worldview with Dennis Campbell. Stay right here.